just thankful that we were able to make it here today. We thank you for this beautiful day, Lord. Uh, we thank you for this church, Lord, that's here on Turlington. Lord, that's just here for anybody who wants to hear the word, Lord, and, and praise the Lord, Lord. And we just pray for the fellowship, Lord, that we have here. Uh, we pray for the uh, for the panorama that we're going to have that's coming up, Lord. Uh, we're th we pray for, uh, we're thankful, and we have a praise from John today uh, that he's here, Lord. And uh, we pray for uh, Miss Cindy and her husband and the things that you brought her through this year, Lord. We just, she's, she's very thankful for that, Lord, and we're very thankful that she's here, Lord. Um, we pray for uh, Brenda and uh, the blessing that she got today, Lord. Uh, we're thankful for that for that blessing that she had today, Lord. And Lord, we just thank you for uh, for the youth. Lord, we just we pray for the youth, Lord. There, there's, there's so many youth being attacked today in school and everywhere, Lord, and they're depressed and just the devil is just out there trying to just, just do what he does, Lord. We just pray, Lord, that you just put uh, your people there, Lord, whoever, whoever needs ministering to, Lord, wherever it may be. Uh, if it's at if it's in the military, Lord, if it's at a grocery store, wherever it may be, Lord, that we'll just take the time to see people hurting and pray with them, Lord. We just we just want to pray for uh, Denny Lewis uh, tonight, Lord, who got in an accident, Lord. We just we just pray for his family. We pray for their comfort, Lord. Uh, we pray for ladies' retreat tomorrow, Lord. We just pray that they get there safe and they get a blessing out of it, Lord, and they get back here safely. And Lord, we just pray for. Uh, Cindy's brother, Roger, and his wife. Lord, we just pray for whatever they're going through, Lord. We, you know what it is, Lord. We just pray that you can just comfort them and be with them, Lord, and help them. And Lord, we just pray for uh, uh, Sister Adrian. And we, whatever's going through, uh, going on with that, Lord, uh, Steve, uh, Stephen knows all about it, Lord. And he's, I'm sure he's been praying, Lord. And we, he's our brother, and she's our sister, and and. Uh, Lord, we just pray that uh, she can get comfort, Lord, and that Stephen can be a blessing to her at, at work and whenever he's around her. Lord, we just pray for her family. And, Lord, we just pray for uh, the Weaver family, Lord. We pray for comfort. Lord, we just pray that uh, they'll get there safe and they'll be around and be able to comfort each other, Lord. And, and hopefully somebody uh, will get saved or something good will happen out of this, Lord. We know that you're in it and through it, Lord. And it's your plan, Lord. And, Lord, we just pray for Miss Taylor's grandmother, Lord. You know what's going on with that, Lord. We just pray for comfort, pray for her and her family, and we just pray that uh, whatever needs that they may have, that we, if we can help, we can help. Just pray that, uh, that you uh, get us all back here safe and get us home safe and get us back here Sunday, Lord. We just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. on here check check all right well we knocked on their door on saturday and he said he said don't be surprised if i come to church i said i won't be surprised hey i'm glad you're here amen and uh y'all are welcome welcome and uh let me get y'all our prayer list here for wednesday this is what we have on wednesday that's our prayer list folks on our prayer list there and uh let me get you one of those here all right robin Hang on, hang on. You want you want them all? <laughs> amen, amen. All right, go with me to uh, Philippians chapter number one again, and uh, we're going to go through uh, the walk of a Christian or the marks of God's people. And uh, as you're turning there, don't forget, be much in prayer for our ladies as they head off to ladies retreat tomorrow. Don't forget, ladies, two thirty. Um, two thirty, be pulling out. Got the van all gassed up and. Uh, amen, yes. amen, and uh, we got uh, uh, Angel had me get in there and get it all cleaned up for you and everything. So I took the car seats out, so we should be good to go. And uh, so be much in prayer for them traveling mercies up there. And on the way back, they'll be coming back. I think what a check out one o'clock or something like that. And uh, so be much in prayer for the men because we've got to take care of the babies. And uh, well, nobody cares about that, right? It's, it's like when I was growing up, if, if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy, right? If daddy ain't happy, nobody cares, all right? <laughs> That's exactly right. And so Saturday, 
uh, be looking forward to our ladies coming back. Pray for also, I didn't mention this in a prayer request, but uh, Taylor's coming in Saturday. Uh, probably, I think somewhere around noon, I don't know exactly when, but he'll be coming in on the train and we're going to pick him up in Newport News Saturday. And Tuesday, I don't mind saying, be much in prayer Tuesday, that's election day. Uh, not for election day, but we've got to meet with a mediator with, uh, with custody with the, with the kids. And so be much in prayer for that. That's why he's coming down, trying to get all that situated. And uh, so be much in prayer for that. November the 8th, ladies, don't forget, 6.30 p.m., bring a snack. Enjoy lessons from the life of Mary for our ladies fellowship. November the 12th, we do have a couple's activity. That's at 6 p.m. Bring a snack. Enjoy some minute to win it games. And November the 12th is Angel's birthday. And uh, we will be, and, and mine's the 15th. She is three days older than I am. My wife. You didn't know I married an angel. Yeah, I did. And look, look, and she's always up in the air harping about something. You get that in a minute, amen. And um, praise the Lord. No, they can't hear me back there, right? <laughs> we'll edit that one out. You know, we get to it, amen. And uh, so, then November the twentieth is going to be our church-wide. That's going to be on Sunday, uh, Sunday after church. Our church-wide Thanksgiving meal. All are welcome. All are invited. Of course, sign-up sheet. It's in the fellowship hall for food. If you can help clean, please see Miss Angela, Miss Edna for that. Amen. And uh, amen, amen. All right. Philippians chapter number one. Philippians chapter number one. And I'm going to read verses uh, 12 through verse number 19. And we're going to look at now, this is a series of chapter number one is the marks of God's people, right? Now, there, there ought to be some distinction when it comes to God's people, right? Amen. Amen. Uh, you know, it's, it's a sad time when you're at work and, and you've worked with somebody for a period of time. And they say to you, didn't know you went to church, or I didn't know you were a Christian, or I didn't know you read the Bible. Well, there ought to be some distinct marks uh, when it comes to God's people. So tonight I'm going to look at the marks of a mature witness. And Paul addresses this in uh, Philippians chapter number 1, verse number 12. If you found your place, say amen. amen. All right. Bible says, but I would you... Uh, should understand there's some things that we need to understand brethren the bible says that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto furtherance of the gospel so he's talking about circumstances right he's talking about situation did paul uh, live a life of a bed of roses no he didn't but i tell you what it probably felt like he fell in a rose bush amen you'll get that in a minute but he says here, but uh, he said, but rather unto furtherance of the gospel, verse 13, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all, uh, all, of, all other places. And many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. The Bible says, verse 16, uh, the one preached Christ of, of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for defense of the gospel. What then? Uh, notwithstanding, even uh, every way, whether in uh, pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and I therein do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. And so we'll look at here tonight here. I'm gonna and I'm gonna have here a PowerPoint so we can follow along. We're gonna look at some of the marks of a mature Christian. I'm gonna and I'm gonna show you some. We're gonna go verse by verse. And what are the marks of mature, a mature Christian? So first of all, we find that a mature witness gives the gospel regardless of circumstances, right? It, you, know, you know, God's, God's uh, 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 commandment of the Great Commission does not revolve around our circumstances, does it? It does not revolve around our feelings, right? So let me tell you, and I'll, be, and I'll be outright and honest with you, when we go out knocking on doors on Saturday, every bit of my flesh does not want to do that. 
100% of it does not want to do that. You're knocking on somebody's door because here's the reality. You don't know what's on the other side of that door. Right? And when I hear something that sounds like it's got teeth and they're doing this number, right? My hand's on that door. Amen? Because there's been a many times that, that dog has come through that door, and I'm glad I had a quick reaction because my hand went up against that door and shoved him back into the house. But regardless of circumstances, regardless of our feelings, regardless whether we feel like doing it or we don't feel like doing it, regardless if we're having a good day or we're having a bad day, regardless if we're in a good form or in a bad form, a mature witness gives the gospel regardless of circumstance. Because look here, verse 12. He said, But I would you should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace. We're going to look at that here in a minute. And in all other places. And many of the brethren in the Lord waxing confident by what? By my bonds, right? So much more bold to speak the word without fear. So first of all here, I'm going to show you, Paul faced dark circumstances. Would you agree with that? Paul faced dark circumstances. He was a prisoner in Rome. 2 Timothy 3, verse number 12 says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. It's a fact. You know, you know the, world, the world would have you to believe that if you become a Christian, it's going to be a bed of roses. All of your problems are going to be solved, right? Let me tell you, the moment you got saved, Robin, the moment you got saved, you got an enemy, didn't you? The devil did not like the fact that you got saved. And listen, he's been on your back since, de- since that time. Amen. I know he has. And he's been against everything you've done. Why? Because you're no longer a servant of Satan. You've now become a child of God. Now, the, now the devil knows he can't take away your salvation. He can't take your salvation because you're sealed unto the day of redemption, right? You're sealed and you're sanctified by the blood of Jesus. But he can ruin your testimony. He can ruin your confidence. He can ruin, look here, your witness for the Lord. He can ruin that. Because Paul, by Paul's testimony and by Paul's witness, regardless of circumstances, we find that many of the brethren, it says here in, in, in verse number 14, and the Lord wax confident by his bonds, right? So much more bold to speak the word without fear. See, Paul faced dark circumstances. He was a prisoner of Rome. And the Bible says here, if we live godly in Christ Jesus, we will what? We will suffer persecution. Amen? Let her be. Paul used his dark circumstances to spread the gospel. Paul used these dark circumstances to to, to spread the gospel. We find that in verse number 12 through verse number 14. First of all, he spread the gospel, the Bible says, throughout the palace. Right? In verse number 13, it says, So that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. You see, this is speaking about this, uh, this, this palace of guards, the, uh, the elite of the Roman army. In Mark 16, verse 15, we know this, and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. 1 Peter 3, verse 15, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. We ought to be ready to give an answer. We ought to be ready to give a witness. Amen. I mean, I'm sure there's times that, that uh, it, it, maybe you've gone through dark circumstances, you've gone through uh, bad situations, and, and, and you've found where the Lord has, has seen you through it and the grace and the hope that God has, has brought you through it, and then somebody along the way is watching, and they may ask you, how in the world 
did you get through that? The Bible says here you need to be ready to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of what? Of the hope that is in you. Amen? And people say this, oh, I, I, I just don't know the Romans road to heaven. Oh, I just don't know the right Bible verses to, to lead somebody to the Lord. Oh, I just don't. And listen, all you have to do is tell your story. Every one of us in this room, we all have a story, don't we, when we got saved. Maybe when we were little, maybe when we were a little older. Listen, and, and by the way, just because, uh, just because you don't have a, 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 like a criminal type testimony, don't think that it's not a good testimony. We think, well, we've got we've, we've to go out and we've got to murder half the world in order to have a good testimony, right? Let me tell you, some of the best testimonies I've heard are those that were raised in Christian homes, amen? Right? I have scars because of the things I did when I was a teenager, amen? I have memories of the things I did when I was a kid, right? And, and, and every time I go home to my hometown, those things are brought up. They'll look at me and go, Kennedy. It's usually like, hey, Kennedy. And that's always, uh, hey, I, we remember you. Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh -huh. <laughs> then it's always, then my mom, you know, we're always up there, you know, up there at my parents' store. My mom comes over and they go, he sa she says, yeah, Steve's a preacher. Then they go, you? You a preacher? <laughs> but you see that all you have to do is give your story. And, and, and you ought to give a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Number two in this, not only did he spread the gospel throughout the palace, but we find also in this verse that he spread the gospel by encouraging other believers to be more fearless in witness. Paul did. Verse 14, And as many of the brethren in the Lord waxing confident by my bonds are much more bold to speak the word without fear. That's because of Paul. Because of Paul's boldness, because of Paul's fearlessness, it encouraged others and it strengthened the brethren to also speak the word without fear. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 8, Be not thou, thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partakers of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Listen, folks, the, the, the world has got no shame spreading their smut, right? The world has got no shame, you know, propagating, propagating their, and, and pushing their agenda, their godless agenda, their, their want for a godless society. But yet we hold back, and we have the hope. And we have the peace. And we have the joy. You know, the Bible says that we have that peace that passes all understanding. But yet we don't find boldness. Amen. And so I find here in these first few verses that a mature witness gives the gospel regardless of the circumstances. Number two, a mature witness holds no personal jealousy nor desires credit or prestige. Look at verse 15 through 18. He says, Some indeed preach Christ, even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. The one preached Christ of contention, not sincerely, Supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. Amen. What then, he says, question mark, look at that, what then? Notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in, the, or in truth, Christ is preached, and, thy, and I therein do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice see first of all here tonight I want to show you some preach Christ for the wrong reason you say say it ain't so yes they do some preach Christ listen some preach Christ because of because of envy right that's what he says here he said again he said some indeed preach Christ even of envy because of envy 
Proverbs 14, verse number 30 said, A sound heart is the life of the flesh, but envy the rottenness of the bones. Some do preach Christ only for envy. Proverbs 23, verse 17, Let not thy heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. It's true, some preach Christ for the wrong reasons. Number two, not only envy, but some preach Christ because of strife. Again, verse number 15, And some preach Christ even envy and strife. You know, the Bible tells us, Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. But in lowliness of mind, let every esteem, each esteem other better than themselves. Believe it or not, some preach Christ for the wrong reason. James chapter 3, verse 13 through verse number 16. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if ye have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. If you're preaching Christ because of envy and you're preaching Christ because of vain glory and strife, the Bible says that you are lying against the truth. You're lying against what's true. You're lying against the Word of God. You see, this wisdom, the Bible says, descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. And who's the author of confusion, church? That's exactly right. You see, some do preach Christ for the wrong. This is Bible. This is what Paul's saying here. Some preach Christ. He says some, some indeed preach Christ, even, even envy and strife. So we find envy, we strive, find strife. And, not, and in verse 16, we find contention. Verse 16, the one preach of Christ, contention. Not sincerely. Supposing to add affliction to my bonds. You know, I know preachers, believe it or not, I know preachers that love controversy no and they love to stir controversy amen they love contention the bible says proverbs 13 verse 10 only by pride cometh contention only by pride cometh contention see it's your pride you see, can someone preach Christ for the wrong reason? Absolutely. Only by pride cometh contention, but with the well-advised is wisdom. Proverbs 22, verse 10, Cast out the scorner, and contention shall go out, yea, strife and reproach shall cease. So number one, yes, some can preach Christ for the wrong reason, because of envy, because of strife, because of contention, number four, and that because of insincerity. They're not sincere. How do you know they're not sincere? Because of envy, because of strife, and because it's contentious. Amen? Again, verse 16, the one preach, uh, uh, one preach of Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add afflictions to my bonds. And in verse number 10, it says that ye may uh, prove that which that are excellent, and that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Titus chapter 2, verse 6 through 8. Young men likewise exhort be, to be sober-minded. In all things showing thyself a pattern of good works, and doctrine showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech, and cannot be condemned that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Listen, if we do it for the right reason, although they may try to tell you, or they may try to accuse you of the wrong things, it cannot be condemned. Amen? All right, so first of all, some preach Christ for the wrong reason. Some preach Christ for the right reason. Amen? Amen?
And I find, first of all, because of goodwill. Again, verse 15 says, Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 5 through 7 says, Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, and singleness of your heart as unto Christ. Look here. Not with eye service. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 5 through 7. Not with eye service as men pleasers. Right? But as the servants of Christ doing the will of God from the heart, with good will doing service as to the Lord and not to men. See, if you're pre the right reason to preach Christ is by the, by the will of God, by good will towards God, not as men pleasers, not for eye service. but the will of God from the heart with good will doing service as to the Lord and not to men. And number two in that is I find that because of love. Verse 17 says, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. One of my favorite verses of scripture, portions of scripture talking about the love of Christ is Romans chapter 8, verse 35 through 39. And Paul says this, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or naked, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? He said, As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. What things are we more than conquerors of? What things are he's talking about? What he's talking about is tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, uh, peril, and sword. And he said, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Listen, the right way and the right reason to preach Christ is because of the love of God. Amen. And I like this here. He says, neither death nor life. You see, death's not going to separate us from the love of God. Life's not going to separate us from the love of God. The Bible even includes angels. Angels can't separate us. You said, are you talking about my guardian angel? No, I'm talking about those that fell from heaven. Amen. The devil's crowd can't separate you from the love of God. Principalities, powers, I like this, nor things present, nor things to come. Not even the things that are going to come tomorrow that you don't even know is coming can separate you from the love of God. Amen. Nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God. Listen to me tonight. If you're saved... I mean, you're, uh, listen, I have to, I have to, you know, go a little deeper on this. I mean, you've been born again. I mean, you've been washed in the blood, right? I mean, you've been saved, sanctified, and set apart, right? That's you tonight. He, listen, the devil, listen, the Lord ain't got no room for a roommate in here. You know what I mean? Listen, he don't move over to the side and let the devil move in there. He can't do that. You're sealed, you're sanctified, you're set apart. Let's stop acting like the devil. Let's stop living like the devil. Huh? Okay. Amen. 1 Corinthians 2, verse number 9, it says, But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear hath heard, neither have entered in the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for, him, for them that love him. Listen, I, our eyes have not seen, our ears have not heard what God has prepared for us that love him. Amen. Amen. First Thessalonians 3, verse number 12. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another. And toward all men, even 
even as we do toward you. You see, a mature witness holds no personal jealousy nor desires credit or prestige. So some, some preach Christ for the wrong reason. Some preach Christ for the right reason. Let her see, Paul rejoiced in the fact that the gospel was preached. And that's the way we ought to be. We ought to just rejoice that the gospel is being preached. Amen. Listen, we're, we get so caught up in, well, I didn't get recognized. Well, I, 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 I haven't been acknowledged. I've been doing this for all these years, and I'm not being acknowledged. Hey, you ought to rejoice that Jesus is being preached. You ought to rejoice that souls are being saved. You ought to rejoice that lives are being changed the glory of God. And by the way, when you've led somebody to the Lord, that, that was not all you that planted that seed, that watered that seed, and led that person to the Lord all in five minutes. Amen. Somebody along the way had come along and they planted that seed. Somebody else come along the way and they watered that seed. Somebody else had come along, along the way, threw a little sunshine on that seed. Somebody else had come along and threw a little more water and they began to grow. And God gave you the opportunity to harvest. But you think you did it all yourself. Right? Do you think you ought to be recognized? When I was preaching in the prison, I'm, and I, I don't mind saying this, because this is what happened. I had never been in the prison ministry. I never thought I'd go into the prison ministry. I told the Lord, that's not even, even remotely where I want to go. Don't ever tell God no. Amen. So when I come off the mission field, the church that we were, uh, we were members of, they were tr starting a, a prison ministry, and the pastor says, how would you like to go into the prison ministry? I said, well, I, I'm going to tell you right now, it is not my calling to go into the prison ministry, but I'll be willing. If this is where God wants me to go, I'll be willing, and, I'll, and, and, and the Lord will lead me. Okay. So the director of this, of this prison ministry hated the fact that I was stepping in without being called. And I told him again, and I said, everything you tell me, I'm going to take as gospel. If you tell me that this is what you don't do in the prison, I won't do it. If you tell me if I'm to walk into the, if, if I'm to knock on their cell door before I walk in, I'm going to knock on their cell door before I walk in. If you tell me I've got to ask permission to sit down on their bunk, I will ask their permission to sit down on their bunk. That's what you tell me I've got to do. I will do it. I said, if you tell me I've got to take my shoes off before I enter the cell, I will take my shoes off because that's what you're telling me to do because I know nothing about the prison. But you know that man got so jealous. In one year's time of being in the prison ministry, I became the assistant state chaplain for the state of Georgia Lord. in two prisons. Two state prisons. And that man called the prison twice to have me removed from that prison because of jealousy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because of jealousy. So I went home, and Angel and I began to pray about it, and God sent us to Virginia. Amen. <laughs> and here we is, right? But you see... We ought to rejoice. And that's what I told that director. I said, listen, I, I said, I'm doing this for your ministry. This is for the Lord. This is to get, this is to get preachers like us in the prison. And he couldn't see it that way. Why? Because of jealousy. Yes. And because of envy and because of strife. The Bible says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. And everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Amen. You see, Paul rejoiced in the fact that the gospel was preached. You see, that's, that's, that's a mark of a mature Christian. Number three. Number three. And this is the last thing here tonight. A mature witness possesses the assurance... Everything will work out for his good and God's glory. Amen. Look at verse 19. For I know that this shall turn 
for my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. You see, Paul knew. Paul knew, and he had the assurance that everything would work out for his good and for God's glory. Amen? You know, a lot of times we don't understand God's intention or God's plan on this side of, of glory, do we? Matter of fact, a lot of times we don't. Just about every time we don't. You see, isn't it, isn't it interesting? When, when things go our way, we always say God is good, right? <laughs> and we do that, don't we? God is good. And all the time, right, until bad things happen, right? That's what I always say when I was in the prison. I said, God is good. And they said, all the time. I said, all the time. They said, God is good. Sitting in the prison. But you know, we Christians that have the privilege and the opportunity to go to church without persecution or prosecution, that we have a copy of God's word. You can go to the dollar store. Now, look, it's a dollar and a quarter now, but you can go to the dollar store and you can get a copy of God's word. Pick up a magnifying glass on top of that so you can read it. But you know what I mean on that one. But look here. But we have the, the opportunity to hear God's word, to preach God's word, to proclaim God's word. But yet when things don't go our way, what do we say? Well, pray for me. The devil's working on me. Well, the devil must really like you. We sometimes, listen, we always say God is good all the time, all the time God is good. Woo, God is all powerful. Woo, God is all knowing. Woo, God is all, all present. God is everywhere, anywhere, and every, in every which way. And God, and, and nothing gets by the, the eyes of God, right? Yeah, we don't want, but when things don't go our way, we, we think, well, maybe God was taking a nap or something. The devil did something behind his back. Listen, listen to me. God knows everything that's going on, when it goes on, before it goes on, and how it goes on. Amen? And instead of us saying, well, the devil's, the devil made me do it, you know, like Flip Wilson. How many remember the Flip Wilson? The whoop, the devil made me do it. Amen? Look, instead of saying that, we need to say, Lord, what would you have me to learn through this? You see, he had the assurance, Paul had the assurance that everything will work out for his good. You see, this epistle was written when? When he's in prison. And look, we ain't talking about Western Tidewater down there. <laughs> I've been to Western Tidewater. I used to go down there and preach. I used to go down there and preach at Western Tidewater. Amen? It wasn't that. He was in the inner, inner, inner prison. He was in the dungeons of all prisons. Is it nowhere? He didn't have any rec room. He didn't have recess. He had twenty-four. Not just locked down. He couldn't even. He didn't even have room to lay down. But yet he was rejoicing that the gospel was being preached. We know at Romans eight verse twenty-eight, don't we? Amen. We know that. As we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God and to them that are called according to His purpose. Two things under that and I'm done tonight, all right? First of all, it's through prayer. Look here in verse number 19 again. For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through what? Your prayer. You see, Jesus, he spake a parable unto them to this end. He said that men ought always to pray and not to faint. I mean, even when you don't feel like praying, you pray. Amen. Amen. You pray. And Paul knew that 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 a, a, a mature witness possesses the assurance that everything will work out for his good and God's glory. Number two, 
It's through the Holy Spirit. You cannot pray outside the Holy Ghost of God. By the way, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, if you don't have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit of God, you ain't saved. Amen. Amen. It is what it is. John chapter 14, verse 26, but the comforter. And here's what, here's what God says. I like this. He said the comforter, right? And he, the next few words here is, is just in case you don't know who the comforter is, he said, which is the Holy Ghost. Okay. That just knocks out all doubt and all confusion. Amen. Yep. The Bible says, whom the Father will send in my name. Holy Ghost God ain't going to come in Buddha's name. Right? Holy Ghost of God don't come in Allah's name. Holy Ghost of God don't come in Muhammad's name. Holy Ghost of God don't come in Joseph Smith's name. Mary, Mary, Eddie, Baker, Patterson, Glover, however many other times she's been married. You'll get that in a minute. Holy Ghost don't come in her name. Holy Ghost don't come in my name. Amen. Holy Ghost don't come in, in, in Calvary Baptist Missionary Church name. The Bible says Holy Ghost of God come in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says, and he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I've said unto you. It's amazing. I'm telling you. It's amazing. I'll get up here and I'll preach and I won't know no scripture. You ever, you, ever, you, ever, you ever had those moments where you forget everything? And there's times I said, Lord, you're going to have to help me. And all of a sudden. And then usually after the service, somebody will say, Woo, that was good. I said, well, I'm glad you remember it because I don't. <laughs> yeah, man. You remember what you said? No, I don't. Amen. <laughs> Amen. John 15, verse 26 and 27. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. Amen. You see, a mature witness possesses the assurance that everything, it all work out for the good. Amen? It all works out for the good if God gets the glory. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. All hearts and minds clear tonight?